Right guys, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV over here. Scoring the players after Newcastle beat Tottenham 1-0 at the new Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium behind us. It's easy for me to say, isn't it, Kyle? We'll start with you. We'll start with Mr. Martin Dubravka, Newcastle's number one. I thought he was brilliant today. Um, he made that excellent save from Kane in the first half. Even the one that was uh, put offside, he saved as well. I thought his distribution was all right, given that um, he, all he had to do was kick it long. Let's be honest, he wasn't like, rolling the ball out or anything like that. I thought his distribution was really good. Command his area really well and you could tell at the end when he was celebrating with the fans how much it meant to him I'll give him an 8 very good performance from Dubravka today fantastic Paul I'll let you start with the first centre half I'll let you start with the captain Mr Jamal sells how much of a improved performance is that from our leader I want to pinch one he was a big beautiful bastard <laughs> today at the back like I'm nicking that one for Jamal Sells. he was 21 Connor <laughs> he was unbelievable I've nearly lost my voice today uh, he was immense at the back organizational heading away fighting scrapping we were against it all the time 20% possession for us 80 for them the defense had to stand up and Lascelles was a 10 out of 10 performance for me uh, one of the contenders for, for man of the match fantastic simply flawless don't absolutely think, flawless don't think I could have bet, put a bet on myself uh, I'll do Paul Dummett uh, Paul Dummett has actually got the man of the match award I'm just looking out for him Lee thank you Lee um, man of the match I think that says everything he was brilliant and do you know what he looked an absolute rock at the back it was good to see them sort of performances from Paul Dummett as well so many clearances it, mr mr well. mr, De mr dependable yeah. strikes again and absolutely brilliant that he deserves his man of the match performance so sure. many interceptions so many blocks so like you know not second being most second yeah. most in the premier league this season 12 interceptions for paul dummett uh it literally people underrate him all the time but he's always a seven out of ten player but today again another got to be a high score with that not, one he's it? definitely not seven yeah. out of ten it's got to be ten out yeah. of ten for mr paul dummett a day absolutely brilliant kyle the last center half fabian shaw i think you've got to look at it make it a hat trick almost i'm gonna nick one it was the elegant man <laughs> fantastic <laughs> in every department the day brilliant his distribution brilliant flawless even Honestly, the, the three, just give all three of them a, t a 10, the centre-backs, all three of them. They were all in sync, they were all brilliant, better than the band. Just <laughs> absolutely, honestly, the defence today, it's the best as a three I've seen them together. Yeah. Port. shape the shape Chopra has come out and he's been already now oh they've been working on it they've clearly been working on it shut up Chopra man we're not going to listen to somebody who's fucking got his track record the shape was definitely there the fight was there the desire was there uh, the, to a man they literally got bitch slapped time and time and time again and they just got themselves up and said harder again 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 um, oh absolutely an unbelievable a classic away performance. I'll let you continue with Emil Kraft because that was the first time you've seen him live Paul. Um, I thought he was a bit shaky to start with but I think as soon as the game grew I think he just gained so much more confidence I think yeah. he thought I can handle myself against some of the best players in the Premier League. Yeah we were saying after the first 10 minutes oh he started a little bit you know and they're getting in down that side they're getting in they're getting in they're getting in all the time their crossing was absolutely dreadful piss poor at times um, but yeah Kraft he grew into it um, and I think you know if you were grading the first half, you'd have really you'd have really graded him down. But the second half performance, again, he was absolutely fantastic. He's got to be a good seven or eight out of ten sort of level of performance. What, what, are, you, what are you giving him? Uh, eight. Why not? I'm absolutely eight. buzzing um, because, like I say, second half. You know, nothing got past. Nothing at all. Half, nothing. But in the first half, he had that mistake where he, like where the ball bounced and he headed it back. And that could have ended up in a goal, but that was I think that was a save from Dubravka, correct us if I'm wrong. But uh, in the second half, he really grew in confidence and he was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, who else is there? Matt Ritchie. Ritchie from a distance. Matt, yeah, he does, ah, doesn't he? Does, he? Matt Ritchie, I'll quickly do this one. Um, huffed and puffed, but you know what? He worked his arse off so much. And do you you know, always get that with Ritchie, though. Win, lose, or draw. Bad performance, good performance. You always get Ritchie working his arse off. He's talking as well. Talking, talking, yeah. talking, talking. Yeah. But crossing his crossing was okay yeah. but you know what defensively that was the job that Steve Bruce asked him to do and you can't fault him on that and it's going to be an 8 out of 10 yeah. for Matt Ritchie man. an absolute man at the back yeah. absolute man always is uh, we'll start with the midfield I'll let you start Kyle with Sh uh, Sean Longstaff's the first one I can think of yeah Sean Longstaff and uh, yeah. Hayden by the way yeah Sean Longstaff uh, I mean going forward the day, we didn't really get much I think 20% possession it was what we had so he didn't see much of the ball but defensively he was brilliant uh, he, uh, for talented players like Lascelles, so Ericsson, um, 
uh, did Ali play? No, no Ali didn't just... play. Harry Winks, a lot, of, a lot of talent in that midfield. So, so uh, they were well, well. You said talent, didn't you? You did say talent, so, so it was not on that list. What's, what's your mark for Shite. for long I think, stuff? I think summing him up, um, he did really well today, and I'd give him, a, I'd give him an eight yeah. for sure. Isaac Hayden. I tell you what, if Dummett and Lascelles were leading contenders for man of, man of the Match, he was an ant knob away from being Man of the Match. He was fantastic. He was here, there and everywhere. did everything. He was Some everywhere. Unbelievable. And we were saying last week, the issue with Shelby is he doesn't offer the protection where Hayden will. He's willing to put his body on the line. He's willing to put a foot in. He's willing to make a tackle. And he's like, he reminds me, he's a bit like Rob Lee-esque. He seems to be everywhere, all over. Um, 10 out of 10. Brilliant. Flo new contract. Yeah. yeah. New contract that's to get it's negotiated. Deserves it. Deserves it. Definitely. Um, Alan San Maximum lasted about 10, 11 minutes and he's injured again. Yeah. I think that might be out for a little spell. No, if it's not too long, but I would just say. Get yourself uh, ready for after the international break, it, and it's then shit for luck for that lad. Like yeah. it is shit for luck. Uh, he you know, pushed them back, man. But uh, I wouldn't give him a score. I'd just give him any. No, it's a non-applicable, definitely. Uh, Miguel, me, you're on Kyle. Ten. Absolutely brilliant. Why? Why was he a ten for you? Was it was his for work how, rate? For, was it what he did going forward? For how deep the lad picked up the ball a lot of the time. He was brilliant, he running forward, and even when he didn't have the ball, he was running back. I think there was a part of the game where he ran. About around the whole length of the field twice and you don't see that and if you don't get quality with Almiron and there's games where the chips are down and you're not playing very well you do get work rate and when we're playing well you get work rate so that's the type of players you need if we're going to be down the bottom like a lot wasn't he? he was like yeah. all over just like round and round constantly you're be fighting down the bottom you need players like him who are going to run and have a bit of quality about them because there was times today where they couldn't handle his pace and they couldn't handle his dribbling on the ball so I give him a 10 he was fantastic like I say he was like Superman Batman everything just combined yeah. uh, amazing absolutely amazing and there was some Atlanta representation here as well today oh, yeah. so no doubt he's wanting to impress his uh, for sure yeah I Let's talk about the goal scorer, Paul. Mr. Joe Linton takes his score really well. Could have had another one on another day as well, but that should hopefully give him the, the start to try and get a few more on the score sheet because some of the runs he was making were absolutely brilliant. I think maybe the fact that he's got his first goal now maybe eases the pressure of him going into the Watford game. It was because we need him to play, play well again against you know an easier team on paper, but just as important in the game. Well, I'm not looking at anything on paper again because the thing is, who would have said we would have beaten Man City and Tottenham in a calendar year? You would have thought you were some sort of glue sniffer, yeah. but we have. So we seem to play better against the big teams. Today, Joe Linton, you could see the quality, the touches, the movement, the work rate, the desire. Yes, he's got things to learn on and there's little tricks to the trade that you can right, say you need to do. Very, you're not very comfortable. Yeah. You can tell that he always has quality. If he gets service, he will score goals. That is an absolute... Uh, you know, given, you can see why we have spent that money on him. Amazing, amazing potential. We took him in the deep end because we have to, but today, it was literally, absolutely, he gave every little percent he had at the end of that. It came off, he virtually crawled off. I was just like, I stood up, I was clapping all the way off. Um, what would you give him today? 10, ten. again, 10. You can't fault the lad. He scored a goal. No, he it was it was good. Yeah, it was you could say it was sloppy by uh, Tottenham and stuff like that. But he it could have easily if that was a Josh Lewis somebody, that would have been skyrocketed. It was a big pressure moment and he handled it. And that is what the number nine needs to do: yeah. handle the pressure, score the goal, get the points in the bag, get back on that team coach, head back up to any one. Just one little or thing. <laughs> Just one little thing. But Joe, with Joe Linton, you, you don't get many chances against Tottenham, and he's put it put it away, which is most importantly. I'm going to do Christian Atto because I let you two talk for about ten minutes about everybody else. <laughs> um, ten out of ten for Christian Atto is something I never thought I'd say. I never thought you'd have to listen to Paul if you look back at the Nottingham Forest game from last year. Nosebleed. <laughs> but do you know what, score. Chris? When I was sitting next to Lee, and I was, we, when Alan St. Maxman came off, we thinking, "Oh no, Asu is coming on." What a performance! He just proved everybody wrong. What an assist! He was taking men on, which we don't really see a lot of of Christian Atsu. And he passed for Joel in it oh, as well. It was yeah, brilliant. Brilliant and as that, well. And that's won, won us the game. But his work rate, driving the team forward. You know, we had, we had to defend as as men, and we we're absolutely brilliant. I'm giving Christian Atsu ten out of ten he, again. Lascelles gets man of the match, but Hayden and Atsu for me. Like, like Paul says, very, very close. Federico Fernandez was he on long enough, Kyle? Not really, no. But he did, he did what he was needed I to do. Yeah, that clearance at the end when the whistle was blown, I was like, get him, have enough, we'll have enough of that. <laughs> Aye, but uh, I, I, I'd go non-applicable myself. But if not, give him a, give him a nine, give him a ten, whatever. <laughs> 
don't care, clean sheet. Uh, Yoshinori Muto definitely gets it, non-applicable, but he did work hard and to probably should have got Sanchez sent off as well. To be fair, Jolton, yeah. when he came off, Jolton was staying on the halfway line a lot because he was pagad. Then uh, Muto came on and he was like that fifth best, or sorry, yeah. third midfielder, if you will. Uh, loads of energy. I was saying towards the end of Paul, his energy is my something that we might need and he nearly got through on goal there, brought down by Davidson Sanchez. How that wasn't brought for a foul, I don't know, but... Um, like I think... I think all things considered, I think Muto, given he had, what, nine minutes, I thought he played really well. To be fair. And let's talk about Newcastle's head coach, and Steve Bruce. Eight. Eight. Uh, eight. Steve Bruce, um, look, there's a lot of opinions out there that says he's not good enough You've to... You've got a couple of comments, haven't you, Johnny? I have, but do you know what? Look, I'm, I'm not... Black White, army and that. All I'm going to say is, is that we needed to, when we needed to get a manager, we got a manager. And yes, it wasn't everybody's first choice. But that is a massive, massive win for Steve Bruce. You well, know, that you, was shut up, Johnny. It, it is, yeah. but you know what, though? It wasn't the choice, right? It wasn't your choice, it wasn't my choice, it wasn't anybody Newcastle fans TV's choice. But he is the choice, and you've got to back, you've got to give him... <laughs> You've got to give him a bit of time, haven't you? You've got, got to give him credit. You've got to give him credit. You've yeah, got to give him credit today because he's definitely. put he's put them out there and and he's he's put them with a game plan and it worked to a tee. Tottenham have had a week off just like us. They've not had to play any of that European games or whatever games. You know they've had a long time to prepare for this game, and Newcastle gave them so many issues. And plus they ran out of ideas when Tottenham are going forward. The biggest comment I can give Steve Bruce, that, that was a Rafa Benitez defensive type of performance today. And, you, and also, I said as well, the previous week, I didn't see the fight against Norwich, but even after it turned out he'd been having an argument with Pochettino about the injury to Joe Linton when he went down. So he's shown that heart, he's shown the desire, the spit, the blood, everything that I asked for last time. Look, at the end of the day, we can all take criticism on board. And it's how he comes out the other side. And today... He's come out the side a lot, lot better. He's come out with a lot of credit. He made a risk and changed the system, which yeah. is which is uh, something that was asked of him, let's be honest. Playing Maximin, uh, Almiron and Joel Linton in the same system, he's managed to do that and make it work. So can he do that against the likes of Watford next week? That's, that's all I'm saying with Steve Bruce, is just let us give him a chance. Are you all in agreement 10 out of 10? Yeah, 10 yeah. out of 10. 10 out, 10 out of 10. rate the fans as well? Go on then. I'll give them 10. Fantastic. 10, 10 for the fans as yeah. well. It was absolutely bouncing. I won't say the same for the Spurs end. I'm sorry, Spurs. You've got a lovely stadium. One of the best away stadiums. Probably the best is. in the league, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, but definitely. the vocal support, it was very, very quiet today. Very quiet. Well, let's just wrap it up there. Like and subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV. Who was your man of the match? And we'll see you later on this evening. <laughs>